Let's talk a little bit about uh, DHCP for IPv6. It's a little bit different than DHCP for uh, IPv4. So the main difference is that we basically have two modes. We have stateless DHCP and stateful DHCP. Uh, with stateless being that hosts use autoconfig for the actual address. So I have a, I have a separate video about autoconfig if you want to check that out. But uh, router 3 being our host, router 1 being our stateless DHCP server, uh, router 3 will just get, get an address through autoconfig and then it will use other uh, DHCP for the other information such as the DNS and the domain name. That's basically what that is. And we set the other config flag on the uh, DHCP router, in this case router 1. For stateful DHCP, our host will acquire the address itself and the other information from the DHCP router. So with stateful DHCP I'm actually going to make router 2 the uh, DHCP server and router 1 will be the relay destination for that router. So let's get started on the uh, basic config. Uh, let me start off with notepad and I'm just going to configure IPv6 unicast routing on router 1 and then I'm going to go into our interface and give it an IPv6 address a link local address and I'm also going to configure this on fast internet 01 so you can actually have uh, the same link local address <coughs> excuse me on separate interfaces so no shot here and let's also give it a global address of 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, colon, colon, 1, 64 or something. And also no shut this. So that's the basic config to set up uh, our, inner, our router for uh, IPv6 connectivity. So let's also add in the DHCP information. So you basically just create a pool like in IPv4. In this case, I'm going to call it stateless. And here, because I'm using stateless DHCP, I'm only adding in the DNS server and the actual domain name. So that's all there is to it. And then I am going back into my fast Ethernet interface, which points to the client, and I'm going to add the uh, not the IPv6 address, I'm going to do IPv6 DHCP server stateless. So you basically link a pool to an interface. That's what that does. And the reason why I'm putting it here is because otherwise, if I put it above here, I will get an error saying that the pool doesn't actually exist. And here we are adding the other config flag. So that's basically the config for router 1. Let me paste that in here. And on router 3, which is our host, I do I show IPv6 interface. I don't have anything configured there right now. So the only thing I actually need to do is IPv6 address. So I'm not using DHCP, I'm actually using autoconfig. And because I'm using autoconfig, I do not need to use the IPv6 enable command that is not required. So no shot here, and we should end up with a autoconfig address. Let me minimize this for our subnet, which is based on our MAC address. Again, if you want to get more information about that, I encourage you to check on my other video. So if I do a show IP6 DGP interface on my client, I will see that I have acquired other information like the DNS or which doesn't actually exist and the domain name through DHCP. So I'm not sure if you actually see social IP6 DHCP. See, you don't actually see that as a binding on router one. So we don't have any actual active clients because this is stateless DHCP. So for stateful, the uh, stateful in addition to a relay, the configuration is a little bit more advanced. So let me remove my previous configuration so I'm actually going to shut down this interface again and I'm removing all IPv6 related configuration from router 3 and I'm doing the same for uh, DHP. let me remove my pool so remove the pool let's go into the interface to show on FS00 
and I am removing the other config flag and I am removing the DHCP server. So basically uh, a blank config with the addition of IPv6 addressing. So how do we set up a relay and how do we set up a stateful DHCP server? Uh, let me start with the relay. So you basically just set the IPv6 neighbor discovery managed config flag on the ingoing interface to the host. So if I look at my diagram, this interface will actually have the relay information and it will have the managed config flag. And then it will point to router 2, which actually houses the DHCP pool. So you, you basically conf you configure it on the interface that points to the clients. So let me add that in here and I'm going to do IPv6 DHCP and then we have relay destination. So our relay can be a global address or it can be a link local address, in this case, router two. So it automatically figures out that this is a link local address, but I actually have to specify the outgoing interface in this case, and then it will tick just fine. So let me go on router two and basically remove this config and give it the link local address of 2. So we have reachability and let me configure my stateful pool. So the configuration is pretty similar to just a stateless pool. I am going to add a DNS server. In this case I'm making it 2.2 and I'm changing this domain so you can see that there's a difference. And I'm going to add the address prefix in here. So 2001 one two three call call slash sixty four. Then I'm going in my interface that points to router one, and I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna create the pool over here. Then I'm also just for a guarantee setting the managed config flag over here, and I'm gonna add an additional command which is the neighbor discovery prefix. I'm gonna use the same prefix above here and I'm going to set the actual lease time with the no auto config flag. So this no auto config basically tells hosts to never use auto config, but with IPv6 it is not really guaranteed that the host will actually listen to that command. So note that I'm not using a global address on router 2, it's not required. And if I go on router 2 and paste this in, I should end up with a uh, DHCP address on router 3 if I enter in the appropriate conf configuration on router 3. So notice that nowhere in IPv6 DHCP you are entering in a default gateway. The host will automatically discover that based on the link local address and which router is sending router advertisements. So if in my previous video, I also explained that. So if I do a show IPv6 interface, faster than at 00, we can see that we are actually advertising a default router preference on router one. So that is not DHCP, that, that is just uh, router advertisements. So for DHCP to function for an address, for an IPv6 interface to actually acquire a DHCP address, I actually do need to enable IPv6 or instead of using this command I can actually I can create a link local address but that basically defeats the point of having DHCP if you're gonna create a link local address for every interface but you do need to enable that interface for IPv6 so that is required so instead of using address autoconfig I'm now gonna use address DHCP and do a no shutdown on that interface and hopefully, if it all goes well, I should get a uh, DHCP address somewhere soon. And I can see that I have received one. So if I do a show IP6 DHCP interface right now, we can see that we have a separate DNS server and a other domain name. So that's basically it for... Uh, DHCP, if I do a show IP6 DHCP binding, I will get it over here. So other than stateless, I will actually see a 
active client of one. And here you can see the lifetime. So that is different than the lifetime that I configured with the uh, neighbor discovery prefix over here. So I'm not 100% sure that this command is actually required, but I do know that this disables autoconfig on the clients. But you might also configure this on an interface, uh, like the interface on the relay uh, device to disable autoconfig over there. So that's basically it for DHP version 6. It's not that hard to implement, but you got to be aware of the difference between stateless and stateful. And one other thing that I wanted to show you is that we have something here, reachable via address of router 1. So it automatically figured out the uh, default gateway. And we can see, well, usually it shows up in this interface, but right now it doesn't. So, yeah, that's it for DHP. Thank you for your time.